Are you here to find out the pros and cons of living in Orlando, Florida? Then you've come to the right place. Before I get started, you should know that my perspective of Orlando is different than most people's. And the reason for that is I consider Orlando my hometown. It was where I was raised and where I grew up. My parents moved from South Florida to Orlando when I was very young. My father was one of the employees that worked at Walt Disney World when they opened up in 1971. It was the reason why we moved from South Florida to Orlando. Without getting into a history lesson of Orlando, it goes without saying that Orlando has changed a lot over the years. The Orlando that I know back in the 1980s has changed dramatically as I make this video in 2022. Although I spend most of my time in Georgia doing business, I still go down to Orlando very frequently. I still have family and friends down in Orlando. The areas of Orlando that I know the best are in the north side, Maitland, Castleberry, and Altamont Springs. Before I get into the pros and cons, I want to emphasize that any negatives that I refer to Orlando is not meant to be a slam against Orlando. But I think most people realize that no matter where you go and where you choose to live, there are both good points and there are bad points for every city. And that is in the spirit of why I make this video to discuss the cons and negatives of Orlando. But I can tell you having lived gone to school, went to college, and started my professional life there, I know Orlando in a way most people don't. And because of that, there are certain things I can't sugarcoat. It's no secret I've spent a lot of time in the Atlanta area, and I will inevitably make some comparisons of Orlando to my experiences in the Georgia area. The first con of Orlando that you need to know has to do with the driving. Every time I come back to Orlando, I am reminded of how horrible it is to drive in Orlando. Now you have to understand, I have driven the streets of Atlanta, so I know what horrible traffic is like. Orlando driving is coming very close to what it's like in Atlanta. Driving is a huge and negative experience when you're living in Orlando. And it's never been so bad as it has been in recent years. Interstate 4, otherwise known as I-4, has been under construction for the last 20 years. It has been non-stop. And because of this non-stop expansion of I-4, it's an ongoing headache when you're trying to travel around Orlando. The alternative is the paid beltway that goes around the Orlando metro area. Unlike the Atlanta area with the I-285 beltway, the beltway that goes around Orlando, you have to pay for. Not only do you have to pay for it, the toll fees are actually quite expensive, and you can rack up some serious toll fees within any given month. So if you plan on visiting or living in Orlando, you should be ready to use and pay for access to these toll roads. And the best way to do that is to get the E-Pass or SunPass transponder stickers and put them on your car. You will need these transponders so that you can get scanned as you drive. The alternative is that you're always going to have to carry a bunch of cash and change with you. I regard these toll fees that you incur when you drive in Orlando as a transportation tax. Having said that, when you move into Florida in general, you don't have to pay state income tax. And Florida tag renewal fees are very cheap. While I'm still on the topic of driving in Orlando, you should know that there are a lot of aggressive drivers in Orlando. This has become a growing trend. I don't know where these tendencies of aggressive driving is coming from, but all I can say is that it is definitely up now more than it's ever been. There are drivers tailing you, there are drivers passing you aggressively, and there are those that cut you off. This happens very frequently. When you drive in Orlando, I highly recommend that you try to be patient and adopt a defensive driving posture. You don't want to get caught up in an incident of road rage and make the news. Another thing that you should know about driving in Orlando is that the city of Orlando adopts many red light cameras. For those of you who don't know what red light camera systems are, they are automated systems that are placed at major intersections throughout Orlando that monitors the way people cross intersections during red light changes. 
So if you're driving through red lights or you're cutting it very close or you don't come to a full stop, you can expect to get a red light camera ticket sent in the mail to you. Now I have to say, I've been very lucky. I have not yet get a red light camera ticket and I'm going to do my very best to never get one. If and when you see a yellow light, you want to come to a halt. And if you see a red light, come to a full stop. Otherwise, you're going to get a red light camera ticket. Between paying tolls and red light monitoring systems, your car is constantly being scanned as you drive throughout Orlando. The next thing that you should know about living in Orlando, Florida is there is an affordable housing problem in Orlando today. And it's become a very bad problem for many people living in Orlando. As I said earlier, because I was raised and worked for many years in Orlando, it's been unbelievable to see the housing costs climb so high in the last 20 years. The housing areas that I follow most are in the North Orlando area. The areas of North Orlando, Winter Park, and Maitland, the starting prices are $700,000. At $700,000 in those particular areas, it is out of reach for many people. Similar to the metro Atlanta area, if you're looking to move into Orlando, you're going to have to look much further out than the central Orlando area. Even Kissimmee, which is south of Orlando, it used to be an affordable place to live, but now it's becoming less affordable. In fact, it's become a high demand area in recent years. The next thing you should know about Orlando is a positive, which I'm happy to report. Compared to over 20 years ago, Orlando has become a much more well-rounded economy. It's no secret that Orlando has long been known as a tourist destination. And for many decades, that's what Orlando's industry centered around, the tourist industry. But fortunately, that has changed and improved dramatically. The tourist industry is almost synonymous with the hospitality industry. The problem with the hospitality industry is that it generally pays very low. And when you have a local economy that's highly dependent on the tourist and the hospitality industry, that usually translates to low paying salaries and pay rates. And that's one of the reasons I started looking outside of Orlando to find better pay and better professional opportunities. I'm happy to report that professional and career opportunities in the Orlando area have never been better than they are today. The local Orlando economy is much more diversified today. The Orlando economy is well supported by the local college education system, which includes University of Central Florida, where I graduated. Valencia College, and Seminole State College. And because Orlando as a city has matured and diversified so much in the last 20 years, the quality of life in Orlando can be very high depending on which area you live in. Honestly, there is so much to do in Orlando. The most obvious are the major attractions in Orlando, such as Walt Disney World and Universal Studios. However, Orlando is now much more than the major attractions. For nature lovers, there are parks and lakes to visit. There is downtown Orlando. There is International Drive. There is the Lake Buena Vista area. And there is the Winter Park area, to name a few. Whether you want to go out to eat, go watch shows, to go shopping, or just meander around, there's a place to go in Orlando. And for people who want to enjoy the coastal areas and the beach, the closest beaches are only one to one and a half hours away, depending on which part of Orlando that you're living in. I'm also happy to report that Orlando has become much more culturally diverse. I personally like ethnic foods, and I like that there is a wide availability in Orlando nowadays compared to 20 years ago. Now the next thing about living in Orlando that I have to talk about has to do with the weather and the climate. Florida in general is already known for its sunshine and heat. However, Florida is also known to being vulnerable to being hit by hurricanes every year. So when it comes to weather and climate in Orlando, it's really a mixed bag. Now I'm going to tell you, I have a personal bias. I hate the Florida heat. 
I hate the Florida humidity. There's just no sugarcoating that. But I know there's a lot of people who enjoy the heat and they will do anything to avoid the terrible cold from the north. So I'm probably the oddball here. I consider the weather and climate to be a con, but I suspect the majority of you might actually consider it a positive and a pro to living in Orlando. Another thing that you need to know about Orlando is it gets very rainy during the warm season, which includes late spring, summer, and into early fall. And what that means is if you decide to become a homeowner in Orlando, you're going to have to cut your lawn once a week. In Georgia, you can get away with doing your lawn once every two weeks. When you're in Orlando or in Florida in general, you're going to have to do your lawn once a week. The weeds and bushes are going to be growing very fast during the warm season. And of course, the bugs and mosquitoes are going to be out in force. So you should be prepared for that. Relating to the issue of weather and climate is the issue of hurricanes. Dealing with hurricane season every year is a fact of life if you live in Florida. However, statistically speaking, the chances of you getting hit by a hurricane, especially in Orlando, is actually very low. I personally don't like the threat of a hurricane to deal with each and every year, but having looked back historically, the number of hurricanes that have actually hit Orlando is actually very low. And if a hurricane did come through Florida, living in Orlando is probably one of the safest places you can be given the central location of Florida that Orlando is in. A collateral damage of having to deal with hurricane season is that it affects the prices of property insurance. Property insurance for homes is very expensive. It isn't a minor expense when it comes to your mortgage payments. So in a monthly mortgage payment, you're going to have to factor in the large property insurance expense as part of the PITI. The next topic I want to touch on, especially for people who are retiring to Florida, you should be aware that there's an increasing demand for medical services. Medical services in Orlando are generally in high demand as it is. But as the population grows older, the demand on medical services is only going to increase. I will say that this is not uniquely an Orlando issue. This is all the major cities in Florida. Getting medical services in Orlando and Florida in general is going to continue to be a rising challenge. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and then subscribe to this channel so that you will receive notifications when I upload new videos. And I will see you in my next video.